All right, now we're good. We're recording. Everyone say hi to YouTube. Here, I'll post a, uh, I'll post a, uh, Hagu Champ in the chat. Hagu Champ. Good old Hagu Champ. What's poppin' YouTube? Check Fef's trigger warnings. Well, I mean, we already read Fef, but yeah, last week it was broken. Uh, they probably patched it by now. That's probably what that kilobyte update was. Fight me, fuck boy. No warnings. There you go. There you go. There was no warnings for Fef. In the end, there was nothing. Volume 11. Mind control. Alright, fair enough. That's it. Betty Crocker, boys. Gotta watch out. Gotta watch out for that B... I almost said BQ. That's not... Crocker's not spelled with a Q. Don't know if you knew that. Anyways, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started here in just a moment. Give me a second. Uh, perp. Uh, the, the, the Kansas City Chiefs won. The Kansas City Chiefs won, uh, Pest Request. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> okay, let's... After 50 years, they won <laughs> the Pest Request. I don't know. It's some fucking football team. I don't know. I don't know where Kansas City is. Fucking let's go. Let's fucking go. It's Jane time. Jane time! Live, laugh, bake. Where's that image where somebody predicted this is what would happen? Here we go, boys. Warnings for mind control. That's it. Holy shit. Why is the menu always so much fucking quieter? It's a beautiful moonlit night in Alternia. The sky is clear. A cool breeze is blowing, and even the unbearable screeching of the steel-throated bat crickets sounds a little sweeter than usual. And yet, Brian has burpees now. Not herpes, burpees. <laughs> a moment of panic hangs in the air. Oh, hey! Dave, are you okay? Hey! Oh, God. What has she done? Dave? Hey? Hey, what? Hey, this is a bad... Hey, this is a bad way to start it. Huh? I don't want to play the game anymore. I don't want to play the game anymore. Please tell me that's just grub sauce. Please just be grub sauce. Please just be grub sauce. Oh, hey. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> Everyone's here. Everyone's here. I picked the death start. Car cat, stop being so melodramatic. It wasn't even me who did it. Eh. Uh. Okay, fine. It was my fault. I admit it. But I'm sure he'll be fine. Yeah, car cat. It's no biggie. I mean, this is obviously the shittiest situation I could possibly be in right now. And like my lawyers will be in touch. Don't even think that they won't. But also, it is literally fucking grub sauce. So, like, chill for two seconds, okay? Oh, thank God! Like, I know the idea of having me to swap... <laughs> having to swap out my soiled ketchup-encrusted pants is getting you all hot and bothered under that sweater, but damn. This is a picnic, dude. There are children pressing. And just like that, everything's alright! <laughs> You have single-handedly revolutionized the art of picnicking on Alternia. You've got a huge checkered blanket, a car-sized bricker hamper, and an unholy quantity of foods and Tupperware containers. A lively crowd of your best and most recently acquired friends. 
everything one could possibly need. Shit's quaint as fuck out here. Oh, hey, guy. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. Look who's hanging out. So, how many tentacles would you say she has, roughly? Hmm. Let's see. It's okay. Take your time. My interest is, um, purely scientific. Yes, precisely. Thank you, Kanaya. This is part of my studies in the field of cryptozoology. It's harder, it's hardly an exact science, but you can help us make it exacter. Well, that's the problem. I really don't think there's a def <laughs> definite answer. She's just so, she just has so many. Why are you blushing, Kanaya? I don't want to know about your weird interest in tentacles, thank you. Fascinating. Everyone seems to be having a really great time. You're a pretty good picnic host, if you do say so yourself. You let yourself lie back in the blanket and relax. <gasps> oh! Sorry. Every time they hang, I'm like, oh! What's that? What's that thing people type in the chat? When something good, just oog. I want to say oog. The O O G H. <laughs> just oog. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oog is for. No, not anymore. Oog is not for bad things anymore. Um. Nepeta, can you please pass me one of those beautiful green pies, please? I can't even... Th I can't differentiate between these voices, guys. Yeah, ooh. I can't differentiate... Look at these two. Look at these two! Oh, it's so fucking good. I can't wait for the Alpha Kids to show up and fucking destroy this all. Oh, sure, just let me... It's okay, I got this. Dude, step off. She didn't ask for your help. Everyone's getting along so well. Well, I didn't ask for your opinion or whether, on whether the mid-blood human female wanted my help or not. Oh my god, did you seriously just call her that? What is wrong with you? Um, guys. Humans don't have different blood colors, you useless tool. Simply enjoying one another's company. All right, that does it. I've had enough of this wishy-washy lawn meal nonsense. And I've had enough of you. Oh, thanks, Nepeta. No problem. Then they're gone. Eat, set, and die. Why don't you make me? It would be my pleasure. Wait, what's going on over there? Oh, no. Dear God, not now. This is a disaster. Gotta find some way to stop this before everything you've worked for collapses under the weight of pointless shitty boy drama. We don't have a moment to lose. The girls are fighting! What's better than this? Guys being allies. Oh, hi there, Gamsey. Don't mind you, you're just trying to stop a picnic emergency. Hey, hold on, sister. Let's not be hasty. Right now, we're witnessing the birth of the greatest, and dare I say, most righteous miracle of them all. Gender. Motherfucking. Equality. <laughs> and just like that, everything breaks apart. You wake up alone. It's a cold, dark night in Alternia. The sky is overcast. The harsh wind is... What is the fuck is the... What is the fuck is happening? What is the fuck is happening? The sky is overcast, a uh, harsh wind is blowing, and the only other sound to be heard is your own breathing. Panicked, shaky, you curl up a little tighter in your puddle of blankets in the corner. What is the fuck is happening? You try to think back to the wonderful dream you were having, but now it all seems ruined. Oh? You were only trying to take a short rest from fermenting revolutionary sentiment among your peers and fixing all the pro- Oh, that was fake. Huh. 
uh, from your peers and fixing all their problems, which, as it turns out, is a full-time job. You just wanted to indulge your imagination for a while. Skip to the part where everyone's happy already. There's nothing wrong with that, right? It all seems so real, so full of potential. Like you could get there in an instant, if you only tried a little harder. But now it hits you like a cold, wet circus pie filled with cement. Your dream of hope was nothing more than that. No basis in reality or accurate characterization. Some things are simply too good to be true. And your subconscious clearly knew that all along. It hurts. That shit hurted. And you don't know whether to laugh, cry, or just get really, really angry about it. You've made some wonderful friends over the last few weeks. Months? It's been a hectic whirlwind of non-stop amicability. Uh, you're not even sure how long you've been going. You've achieved so much in your quest. You know that for a fact. But now, looking around this empty room filled with the ghosts and memories from a lifetime ago, you can't help but feel despondent. Maybe there's some things you won't ever be able to fix. Man, this blows. For some reason, your thoughts turned to John. He was conspicuously absent from your dream. Feels like you haven't seen him for ages. You miss him. Without really thinking about it, you pick yourself up. I've had enough of this horrible planet for now. Oh boy. John, huh? I have a feeling John isn't exactly where we're going to end up. Maybe, maybe John from another life. Your friends here will be alright without you for a while. You tell yourself that a few times, just to make sure you believe it. And then? Zap. You materialize in a pleasantly familiar suburban neighborhood, standing in front of a pleasantly familiar house. It must be late fall by now. There's barely any leaves left on the trees. There's a chill in the air. But your heart fills with the warmth, at the prospect of hanging out with your old friend John again. While your newer friends have all been fun to spend time with, in their own ways, you can't help but feel a special kind of fondness for John. It's not like you play favorites with your chums or anything, but maybe the fact that he was the first friend you met in your journey sets him apart from the others. I get it. It's like... It's like the reader. Uh, it's nice to be back on Earth, too. You miss being able to go out in the sunshine. Your eyes wander a little, taking in the trees, the grass, the houses, before settling in the mailbox in the yard. A worrying thought occurs to you. Maybe, in getting so caught up with meeting so many new people, John has forgotten all about you. Surely, your friendship wouldn't have diminished so quickly. But were you really all that close to begin with? You still feel bad about having thrown his birthday present in the sewer all that time ago. That was just such a shitty thing to do. In more ways than one. You were a really bad friend to John, before you were friends with John. You're suddenly overcome with the urge to make it up to him. Instead of making a new friend today, why not try to be a better friend to the one you already have? Take a peek at the mailbox. There seems to be something inside. Oh boy. Maybe, if you absolutely make sure to give it to him this time, that will start to make up for your early morning mistake. Let me guess. It's another copy of Suburb, and this time, we gonna fuck it up. Oh, this time. All times. What am I going with, guys? Uh, MLG Pro says death. In the new emote. New emote form. That's right. Download better Twitch TV. You can have the death emote. Past. Pat. Past. Past? What? Right, and I have better Twitch TV. That's great. Use the emote. <laughs> Pilfer. Why are people saying past? This is Pilfer the Post. They do. There's absolutely a bomb in there. I don't remember. Oh. Was that a was that a thing in Homestuck? I don't even fucking remember. Pilfer the Post. Yeah, that's an excellent idea. John will be so happy that the mail came with no mishap and so grateful that you, his trusted pal, were able to make it happen. Perhaps he could even pretend it's an apology gift you got him. Wow. You've gotten so good at being a friend by now, it's not even real. But there's basically no way this plane can backfire. You guys remember the bomb. I did not. You reach a hand inside the mailbox and grab the package, and then everything goes dark. 
You guys have good fucking memories. You guys have good fucking memories. Damn. I did not remember that at all. <laughs> did not remember that at all. Reconsider. On second thought, that's a terrible idea. Like, holy shit, that's bad. You take a moment to slap yourself around the face for a few minutes just to rub it in. How could you be so stupid? The kind of depravity that leads to one to desecrate the sanctity of a friend's mailbox is what got you into this mess in the first place. Oh, huh. It's like the mailman forgot to put up the, you know, the thing. The flappy wingy doodad. The bright red, the bright red arm dealie on the side of the mailbox. You're quite certain that this is the thing that's supposed to be up when there's mail to be retrieved. Even an idiot can tell you that much. You're a first-rate idiot. You carefully raise the little flag. Immediately, out of the corner of your eye, you spy moving an upstairs window. It must be John, scoping out the mail again. Quick as a flash, you zap yourself out of sight and behind a nearby bush. A white cat is hanging out back here. It hisses at you. But you let a wave of crackling retcon energy dance across your palms and the kitty vanishes. It literally just straight up disappears. That's... okay. Fine. Whatever. It is a truth universally acknowledged that cats can do whatever the hell they want, except for taking this hiding spot, that is, which you have now commandeered in the name of friendship. God cat. I don't know what the deal with God cat was. Oh ho ho! Oh ho ho! This is a much better plan to surprise John. You can't believe you didn't think of it before. You know he loves pranks, but what better pranks than to be ambushed by a dear friend? You hope you're still his dear friend. Oh god, you're getting nervous again. Bib. Bib's got her own emote. You hear the front door open. Shoot, here he comes. That's not John. Wait, this isn't John. Oh goodness, no. Why, it appears to be some kind of famous detective type individual. Or at least, someone in the famous detective disguise. Oh, this is like some real-ass fucking hive swap music. That's some fucking great James right there. Let me crank this shit. I love that instrument in particular. The wah, 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 wah. That's. I hear that. And I'm like. That's like hive swap shit, dude. Reminds the Act 1 voice. Brings me back to the Act 1 days. Y'all remember uh, Joey? Y'all remember Joey Claire? I remember Joey Claire. I think it's time we brought her back, boys. Remember Domic? I don't. Thanks, I did this in an hour and 20 minutes before the root came out. Because there was a mix-up with the music. That oh, shit. Hey, James. It's good shit. It's real good shit. As usual. Alright, that ought to be good. <laughs> we never even met Domic, guys. All we have on Domic is that he was an asshole. This isn't John. Oh, goodness, no. Why, it appears to be some sort of... I already read that. But what's more, you get the strange impression that this person underneath the disguise isn't John either. Domic sucks. Yeah. Say? James agrees. Whoever it is. They make a beeline for the mailbox. Oh, shit. Maybe you're watching another mailbox robbery in action. That would explain the need for a disguise, you guess. They reach out their hand. All of a sudden, several things race through your mind unbidden. The smell of burning, a flash of light, pain. Without thinking, you spring into action. <laughs> These are already some great fucking sprites. Love her. Love Jane. Oh, man. I miss old Jane. I miss old Jane! Non, non epilogue, Jane. Fuck. You know, Jane used to be one of my favorite characters. Well, it is, but like, 
Not new one. Not new Jane. Oof. There she go. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Tobias. It's the <laughs> It's just a general outline of Tobias in the background. That's the good shit. Copyright police, exactly. There's the bunnies. You grab the interloper and zap inside the house. You both materialize in midair and collapse in a heap on the floor. Outside, you hear the telltale sound of an exploding mailbox, because for some reason you know what those sound like. Phew, that was a close one. Apologies in, <laughs> Apologies in advance, guys, for this voice. Oh lordy, that smarts. What? What on earth just happened? Your companion sits up in a bit of a daze. It looks like the disguise got knocked off on all this kerfuffle. Your hunch was right on the money. This is definitely not John Egbert. She does look oddly familiar, though. You oh! That's the one, boys. That's the one, boys. That's the one I'm using for the thumbnail for, sure. Also, Jane Fick? Also, this is the new- This is the new emote, boys. This is the new emote right here. We're getting it. This is like new emote right here. Shit, dude. It's so fucking good. I could look at this I could look at this fucking sprite forever. Fuck, it's good. Sorry for reading the credits now, but I got to know who drew this. Hold on. This one. Gina, you have my thanks. Gina, you have my thanks. It's fucking great. It's fucking great. I love it. It's such a... So good. Alright. Back to it. You take a look at the window. Down into the yard and below. Yep. Just like your ears told you. Where once there was a mailbox, there is now a smoldering wooden stump, surrounded by debris. It's a sight to bring a tear to any mailman's eye, fake or otherwise. Oh fuck, she's got a bong! Oh wait, hold on. Oh, it's not a bong, it's a spoon. Ha <laughs> ha, spoon! You turn back around to find the stranger standing over you, looking thoroughly disgruntled. She's pointing a large red spoon directly at your chest. It doesn't really come off as all that threatening. You have to be honest. <laughs> a bong! <laughs> Although she could probably do you at least some form of injury with it. The injury likely wouldn't be all that serious, but you try to take it seriously anyway. Just to be polite. Now hold on just one moment, Buster. Who are you? What are you doing in my bedroom? And what in the blue blazes is going on? Come on, spit it out! Oh no. You ain't be putting the spot. Boop boop. You hate being put on the spot. <laughs> the first question was such a tough one, too. Who are you? It's something you don't even have a definite answer to. Even after all this time. Gosh, she does seem awfully confident with that spoon. You begin to entertain the thought that this girl might simply decide to beat you to death with it. You're finding it hard to think amid all this confusion. Didn't she say that it was her bedroom? You were dead certain that this was John's house. It is John's house. It even has the tire swing and everything. Why is she a cowboy? Because she's from the South. And this girl, who even is she? John's never mentioned having a sister or anything before. But looking around the room, it's obvious that she lives here. And there's no trace of any of John's things. Did he move house without telling you? That thought makes you impossibly sad. Well, if you won't talk, I suppose I'll have to sus- Sus! You'll have to faff- You'll have to shush! <laughs> Isn't she from Washington State, though? No. She's from South. She can sus! She, she can fuff! Oh, fuff. Oh, shush! Who had you? Who had you? What you did was not only humiliating. Pizza Hut and Garage? 
Look, you big-eared freak! You fine, Jeffrey, and you fine, Jeffrey, and you fine, Jeffrey! I'll have to suss out the truth myself. Sorry, guys. She looks at you very carefully for a moment before glancing over at what I went into fetch pence mode. Glancing over at one of the posters on the wall. Yeah, Roxy is New Yorker. I remember that. Fetch pence. Have you ever seen fetch pence? It's like one of the greatest works of YouTube poop ever. <laughs> a leg in one hand and a verb in the other. <laughs> Fetchpence stream. It's fucking great. Fetchpence is so fucking funny. <laughs> this is, okay, she looks at you very carefully for one moment before glancing over at one of the posters on the wall. It's a black and white picture of what looks like a daring group of detectives. They're drawn in a fairly minimal style with round, ovoid heads. Immediately, her face lights up in recognition. Pester Quest Route 1. Chicken and Winnegish. Look at that sprite! There's too many to pick! There's too many- There's too many, guys! I can't pick all these thumbnails. They're so good. Fuck. I know I said this for the Terezi route, but this might be my new favorite sprite. Look at her eyes! There's sparkles in them, guys! Fuck. What did I say during the Terezi route? Like, way too much. Oh, it's look at her! That's... That's me with Jane right now. Oh! Oh, I see! <laughs> Mom's the word. She taps the side of her nose knowingly and winks. You realize that she's trying to let you know that she knows something that you supposedly both know. But all you really know is that you have no idea what it is. Oh, you're very good. Pretending not to know... That which you know, and I know that we both know? No, you're telling her you haven't got the foggiest clue what she's talking about. Knowing stuff. How could anyone possibly accuse you of such a thing? It's alright, I won't tell anyone. Keeping incognito is of the utmost importance for problem sluice like us. Always a pleasure to meet a fellow fan. She seems to be under the impression that you're some sort of cosplayer. I did that. Oh, it's because... <laughs> I forgot. MSPA, the reader, looks like the Problem Sleuth character. <laughs> I completely forgot. Holy shit. She seems to be under the impression that you're some sort of cosplayer? Either that or an undercover agent of some sort. Oh, what the hell. You might as well roll with it. This will be easier than pretending to be a postal worker at any rate, will it? Hold on a moment. I've just got the, I've got just the thing for a fellow gentle person of taste. She puts the spoon away for a moment, which is a relief, then whips out another copy of the poster. And Pen out of nowhere and signs it? You've never met or heard this girl before. She just straight up giving you an autograph. You take a look at the signature. The name reads Jane Crocker. Huh. Guess this girl's name is Jane, then. Now that we've got that out of the way, nice though it is to make your acquaintance, that doesn't explain what you're doing in my house. Come to think of it, how we even got here? Well, it's all very simple, actually. Just... Just a boring, everyday example of an innocent bystander stepping in to save an unwitting teen from a parcel bomb with their zappy hell treasure powers. Nothing weird at all. You zap around the room a bit, by the way of demonstration, ending up back where you started. Hmm. Transportalization technology. I knew various competitors of ours who had been developing something like that for a while, but I had no idea they were already doing field tests. I suppose it shouldn't surprise me. But a parcel bomb, you say? You gesture out the window at the sad, obliterated remains in the mailbox. There was nothing anyone could have done to save it or its contents. Oh, shoot. Jane wasn't expecting any extremely important deliveries, was she? Potentially in the form of a significantly birth significant birthday gift? Or a copy of a mysterious computer game? You mean Spurb Alpha? I'm not surprised you've heard about it. 
That isn't due for another week, though. Oh, well, that's a relief, then. No harm done. I wouldn't go quite that far. Alpha notwithstanding, the fact remains that someone tried to blow me up. Okay, so some harm done. Gee, the nerve of some people. You cannot fathom who would possibly want to do such a thing, and especially to someone as harmless and personable as Jane here. Oh, pff, come on. One doesn't like to state the obvious, but... If I had to guess, it's probably related to my being in the line to inherit one of the largest corporations on the planet. Quacker Corp has its enemies. Enemies? Good. Enemies. Quacker Corp has its enemies. There's no question about that. Oh. Self-voicing enabled. Good. Okay. Self-voicing disabled. Th thank you. Thank you, uh, voice guy from fucking Hypnospace. Hypey. Oh, of course. That's why your surname was so familiar. Jane is the new face of the Betty Crocker Company. You don't know what you expected. Considering what's happened in your journey so far, you should have seen this sort of thing coming. Speaking of which, you wonder aloud if anything like that, uh, if anything like this has ever happened before. The only thing that could make this any more surprising is if Jane had been sent similarly life-threatening cargo on any previous occasions. Oh, yes. Why, we got mailed something similar just last week, in fact. With the little heart behind her, it looks so cute. Fuck. How do I, like, um... How do I mail Gina all my money? How do I, like... Guys, how do I mail Gina all my money and go into, like, the poorhouse? And, like, give Gina my car? And <laughs> just, just give Gina all the money I have for this? For this, what I'm looking at with my eyes? We got mail... No, all of it. All of my money. <laughs> And I want to give her, like, all of it. And I want to go, get, go poor because of this spite. We got mailed something similar just last week, in fact. You try not to think too hard about the fact that Jane apparently fell for the exact same trick two weeks in a row. Father was out in the yard, about to take his car out back for a soak. When the blessed mailbox went up in smoke. It was quite a shock. Ever since then, he's been a little antsy about me checking the mail myself. But today it arrived while he was out. Good thing, too. He would That's a good fucking GIF, too. GIF. Good. Sprite is what I meant to say. Why am I saying GIF? I love you. You're so good. Perfect. Except you turned out to be a fascist. That was pretty bad. But... But, like, tiny. Tiny. Oh, you guys are going to comment on me pronouncing GIF wrong. Hmm. You want me to you want me to stop playing this, the game? What's that? Oh, you want you want to stop? You want me to close out of the game, guys? You want to you want to just stop? Like we can do that. We can do that if you want. Yeah. Assholes. I've talked about this. I don't give a shit how I pronounce things. It's just going to continue. So, better get used to it. Good thing, too. He would have thrown a fit if he'd known. I'm barely allowed out of the house as it is. I'm sure he means well. But it can come off as a bit overprotective sometimes. It's plumb ridiculous. A grown lass full of vim and vigor can take perfectly good care of herself. Fucking look at this one. Look at this one. Look at this one. That's a good one, too. <laughs> you don't want to pass hasty judgment on someone's familial situation, but it sounds like Jane's father is trying to keep her safe. Can't be easy, constantly deflecting death threats away from someone determined to walk right into them. Where's her sense of self-preservation? I suppose it might seem strange to the uninitiated, but you sort of learn to accept it after a while. I've been dodging death ever since I can remember. People seem really determined to do me in. I simply can't explain it. 
Jesus. Wow. That must be pretty rough going. Um, God. That sounds awful, actually. Being the imminent ruler of an empire must come with a fair amount of people who want you gone. Thinking back to your encounter with Feffery, uh, you suppose that you were recently part of such an attempt yourself, in a manner of speaking. Seems fucking great. Wonderful. You declined to mention this to Jane. Being reminded of your time at Alternia causes you to lapse into an uncomfortable silence. Jane looks around a little awkwardly before breaking it. So, not that I'm ungrateful for the fact that you appear to have rescued me from certain peril, but... Oh. Oh, right, of course. You're intruding into the complete stranger's home. You'd almost forgotten that this is the first time you and Jane had ever met. Your heart sinks as you consider that, between the vastness of the universe and the determination... Don't say that word. Do not say that word. The determination of those attempting to murder her. This might be the last time you ever meet as well. Jane offers to show you out. On the way downstairs, you politely... Hey, look. There he is. It's the old boy. Old boy. Jane offers to show you out. On the way downstairs, you politely ask her how long it's been since her family moved here. Does she know if anyone called John used to live in this house? I think we're looking right at him. Old Johnny. She gives you a strange look before gesturing to a... Oh, God. Is that a corpse by the fireplace? You take a moment to pro process the fact that Jane has stuffed a human person mounted on a plinth in her living room. She says it's her pop-pop, which you guess means a grandfather. It's kind of hard to parse some of the vocabulary Jane uses sometimes. Anyways, the guy's name was John. Can't help but see a resemblance to your good friend Egber Egbert. You've encountered enough coincidences by now to know this must be him somehow. You must have traveled forwards in time by accident. Well, or some such. This is the only possible explanation. You tried very hard not to have a whole mental breakdown about your apparently long-dead friend, but sadly not hard enough. However, at the sight of your various expressions of horror, shock, and confusion, Jane perks up considerably. Did you know my dear old Pop-Pop? You should have said something. He was a popular fellow, so suppose it's only a matter of time before one of his friends from his performing heydays came to visit. That's right, Jane. Keep talking about him and your friendship in the past tense. This is totally helping you feel better. Uh, by which you mean to say, yes, Jane, you're absolutely right. You're just an old, entertaining friend of her pop-pops, who just so happened to be visiting the area in the middle of, um, circus touring season? You try not to be too insulted when Jane eats the lie up without a moment's hesitation. Well, if one of old Pop-Pop Crocker's pals is here, I suppose I can't tur just turn you out on the street like some nobody. And Papa would never forgive me for giving a family friend the cold shoulder. You simply must stay a little while longer. I insist. You cannot help but agree enthusiastically. And here you were thinking this volume was over before it really got started. Gee, this makes a nice change. You've grown accustomed to putting in a lot of hard work to score some hangout time with various people on your journey, but all it took to convince Jane was a pre-established connection with her apparently very wealthy relatives. It just goes to show you stuff. <laughs> it just goes to show you stuff. I'm afraid I haven't fulfilled my duties as host very well so far, but I'm determined to change that starting now. A lot of determination this arc, huh? But, um, what to do? You've been playing the game of friendship for long enough by now to sense an important decision approaching. You take a quick inventory of Jane's important character details. You mean interests and personality traits. She seems to have a passion for the lost art of sleuthing and famous detectives of years past. Her eminent inheritance of a baking conglomerate and expert spoon wielding likely indicate that she knows her way around a cake or two as well. Oh boy. Why don't the two of you... Die. Die. Oh, fuck! There you go. Pip actually, uh... Pip actually did end up coming. Hey. Hi, Pip. How you doing? We got some stuff. I don't hate Undertale. 
I love Undertale. It's just determination, you know. Reminds me of, uh, you know. Determination had some, uh, dark, dark, dark meanings. One sec, guys. Taking care of myself today with cake. Yeah. God, I wish that were me. <laughs> Nah, I don't remember how to do that. Eh, it's some fucking command. Oh, well. So what should I pick, guys? Let's practice some self-care. You know what? All this heavy stuff has really been getting to you recently. Christ, you left Alternia to get away from the hell-murdery nonsense. But if anything, it feels like it's just as stressful back here on Earth with Jane. The adrenaline rush from the impromptu rescue is beginning to wear off. And your legs start to go all wobbly. You slump down against the wall, exhausted. Man, this really took a lot out of you. Oh, gracious. Are you alright? Yeah, yeah, you just need a minute. Oh, God. It's so weird and embarrassing. How come it's only once you were out of the bad situation that you stopped being able to cope with it? You try to pull yourself together, but then your stomach growls like an aggressive, hungry cat. Come to think of it, you haven't eaten anything and you don't even know how long. Jane gives you a sympathetic, almost grandmotherly look. Sounds like somebody's hungry. You know, I was planning on baking something after taking care of the mail. Although, I guess that it, uh, took care of itself in the end. So, since plan A seems to have gone up on Pillar of Smoke, let's move swiftly on to plan B. Fancy helping me whip a cake into submission? We can call it a thank you for saving my bacon back there. Gosh, that sounds like a wonderful idea. You feel like you could eat a horse, or even better, a horse made out of cake. I can't remember the last time you had cake, in fact. Oh. Now, if that isn't about the saddest thing I've ever heard. She vanished. She fucking... Oh! <laughs> Every time there's a new fucking sprite, I just lose my mind. Every time. Love it. Red. Live, laugh, bake. Fucking, of course. Of course. Why wouldn't it say that? Let's be honest. Jane sets you up with an apron, starts pulling ingredients and utensils out of various cupboards and drawers. Seeing the various colorful bags and boxes all lined up in the kitchen counter fills you with excitement. Gina did do a wonderful job. I was just talking about how, like, I would give everything to just everyone responsible for this great volume. <laughs> oh, hey, by the way, Ryan want to... <laughs> That's a cool message, Perp. I really like it. Thank you. The idea of collaborating with Jane to make something delicious gets your heart racing. Surely there could be no better path to friendship than this. I need those material possessions. Please, I need my Back to the Future merch. But you guys did such a good job. Just, in general, everyone on the Pester Quest team has done such a good job. I really enjoyed this a lot, obviously. Once she seems sure that she's got everything you need, Jane fiddles with the oven for a few seconds. Just need to set the oven to preheat. There we go. Now let's get cracking, shall we? You look around expectantly, hoping to see a recipe book or similar amid the collection of baking equipment. Oh no, we don't need one. My junior batter master's bowl buster stirring solution 50,000 will do the trick just fine. A passionate burning fire seems to ignite in Jane's eyes as she brandishes her trusty red spoon. With a pearl practice motion, she adjusts a series of buttons and dials on the side, and a vaguely feminine robot voice begins to speak out of it. Oh, I don't have a voice effect maker thing. Damn it. I will try to do GLaDOS the best I can. Sorry, guys. 
triple chocolate layer cake, medium rare, begin regimen. Begin regime. Begin regime. Begin regime. Wait a minute. Hold up. Begin regime. <laughs> oh, God. Jane nods to herself and presses another button. The voice begins listing off a series of ingredients and measurements. You know, GLaDOS knows a lot about cakes. Just saying. You guess the spoon must have a lot more tricks up its sleeve than you originally gave it credit for. Technology really is amazing. She works for the Condis, remember? Yeah, I remember. Of course I remember. You begin to reach for the bag of flour, but with lightning speed, Jane leans over and grabs it herself. She doesn't even seem to notice that she had to bat your hand out of the way. It's good sprites, but mind control, man. My poor girl. My poor girl. Oh, well, that's all right. Jane seems to know what she's doing. You'd hate to spoil her fun. In the blink of an eye, she has the flour measured out and reaches for the butter. Appraise. Solidified. Bovine. Extract. You will comply. Jane continues her work in a thorough and efficient manner. And the spoon continues reading out instructions in a calm, steady voice. It's somewhat soothing. Even if the choice of vocabulary is a bit strange. It certainly seems to be relaxing Jane. Try reading the robot lines while inhaling, and it's an instant robot effect. I'm not sure if I can do that without passing out, I'm gonna be honest. What is... What is... Oh, no. What is this fucking... All these sprites, man. She's gonna fall fucking on her face, dude. She's gonna sleep. Fucking Jane's going to sleep, boys. Her face was a picture of intense concentration, but now her eyes appear as dim and distant. She could almost be asleep. You're just coming to terms with the idea that baking with Jane is a spectator sport, rather than a team game, when a sudden noise snaps her out of trance. Oh! Her hand goes to her apron pocket and she fishes out her phone. Something on the screen makes her face light up with gentle excitement. I think you catch the slightest of something green. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, nope. No Roxy, guys. Sorry. It's the boy. It's the boy. Sorry. She doesn't give you a good look at it. <laughs> Everyone was so excited for Roxy. Everyone was waiting for Roxy, but I was like, guys, it's gonna be Jake. And everyone was like, no, Ryan, have faith. It will be Roxy. I was like, nah, fam, I'm telling you, it's Jake. Um, I have to, uh, take care of this? Whew. Whatever it is, it seems to have gotten Jane into a bit of a tizzy all of a sudden. <laughs> Jane's spoon be like, Stir ingredients, then buy hamburger helper. Whatever this is, seems to have got Jane into a bit of a tizzy all of a sudden. She thrusts the spoon in your direction. Here, just follow the instructions. You can't go wrong. It's all happening so fast. Being entrusted with Jane's precious spoon so early in your friendship. This must be a very great honor. She obviously believes in you a great deal. You try to assure Jane that you won't let her down, but she's already too engrossed in her phone to acknowledge it. You sigh to yourself knowingly. For all her antiquated, uh, antiquated phraseology and old-timey aesthetic, Jane is still a teen at heart. Add ingredients to vessel. Commence liquidation. Obey. I turned into the robot from fucking Subnautica. Oh shit. You were so caught up in being judgmental of a young person that you were completely lost track of what you were doing. Which was... Uh, dissolve desiccated cocoa in boiling water. Submit to your labor. Hey, hang on just a moment. You just barely managed to remember what the previous instruction was before the spoon moved into the next step already. Oh, God. What were the other ingredients you needed to add? You tried to guess, but there's too many things on the counter. You don't know what half of them even are. You spare a glance at Jane, hoping against hope that she noticed your plight. She's too far distracted to help you right now. You'll just have to work it out by yourself. She's counting on you. Think, damn it, think! Fold cocoa paste into mixture. Make haste. The end is nigh. Eggs. You don't remember doing anything with eggs, but the spoon definitely called for some a while ago. In a blind panic, you grab one and toss it into the bowl. Only after you've stirred into the mixture do you remember that it's generally best to remove the shell first. Pour cream into small saucepan. And heat over a low flame for a few minutes, ensuring that it does not boil or simmer. Once the cream is hot, 
Remove the saucepan from the heat. Cease reproduction! The calm robot voice isn't soothing to you. Not anymore. Its dulcet tones have become your tormentor. It wouldn't be so bad if it would slow down for a moment. Is there a speed setting on the spoon? I just had more time to think. Are you so sure you would like... Are you sure you would like to start over? Oh, wrong button. You can't go back. Not now. Cancel the prompt and grit your teeth in grim determination. Damn. It's full of determination this time around, boys. Amalgamates out the wazoo. You can fix this. You have to fix this. It's like James said all those minutes ago when she sent you on this quest. You can't go wrong. It's at this moment that your eyes land on the bag of sugar. Stop the sex! <laughs> the noticeably unopened bag of sugar. It's just sitting there smirking at you, with a look of unbearable smugness to the colorful lettering on its face. Who, me? What could you possibly need me in a cake for? You tear the bag open and dump the entire contents into a mixing bowl in an ice cold fury. When the toss is gutted, uh, when then you toss its gutted, lifeless husk into the garbage where it belongs. Revenge has never been sweeter. Cocaina. Nope, flour. Anyways, here's why I disrespect the military. <laughs> One of my favorite videos. Oh lordy, sorry to leave you in the lunch lurch for so long. <laughs> it was sugar. It's true. Cocaina. Nope. Sugar. <laughs> I had to deal with a friend in his daily moment of personal crisis. Although, that's not really saying much. Quite frankly, most of his life seems to be one long personal crisis. And I suppose I'm hardly in any position to complain. I do so like his company at the end of the day. So anyways, the, the cake. Have you been managing? You don't look up at Jane when she comes back over to you a few minutes later, seemingly oblivious to the devastation you've wrought on this poor kitchen. You stare down at the thick, lumpy batter sitting in the bowl in front of you, and in that stodgy, curdled mess, you cannot help but see yourself a complete and utter failure. Is everything all right? You want to tell her to explain that, no, Jane, everything is not all right. It's all gone to shit. But you can't look anywhere except down. You can feel the bottom falling out of this friendship opportunity like that that of a poorly supported Victoria sponge. Once Jane gets a good look at the batter, it's game over. You just know it. As she peeks over your shoulder at your handiwork, you brace yourself for the dreadful moment you've felt so many times before across countless alternative selves and timelines. You watch for the telltale signs of a person deciding that Whatever pathetic and somehow yet unspecified creature you are, they don't want you in their life. I don't think this is game over, guys. But strangely enough, the moment never comes. Instead, Jane puts a hand lightly on your shoulder and gives you a gentle smile full of teeth. There, there. No need to pull a face like that. So yes, this ended up being a bit of a misadventure, but... It's not the end of the world. But Jane was counting on you. And you let her down. You had something that needed to be fixed, and you couldn't manage it. As on so many other occasions during your journey, you've only made things worse. You try to convince Jane that your guilt is that of your guilt in this matter, but she simply shakes her head. Oh, Pasha, you did nothing of the sort. You tried to make the best out of a bad and confusing ordeal. Nobody can blame you for that. Even if your best is, admittedly, a little suboptimal. But sometimes, when things go wrong, it's not a simple case of being able to fix it by soldering, of soldiering on blindly in the face of adversity. Sometimes, the only way to set things right is to cut your losses and start over from the beginning. And that's not really the same as giving up. Hey, Pip, thanks. Hey, Pip, thanks. I like this. I like this Jane a lot. I miss this Jane. Guys... Guys, let's be real. I miss... I'm... I sometimes... Sometimes I forget... How wonderful Jane was. Sometimes I forget. Let's all... Let's all take a moment. Let's all take a moment to remember... 
good game. You try to remember with all your you try with all your might to swallow this good advice Jane is serving you, but the look on your face must not be all that convincing. Jane sighs. Look, I'm sorry for abandoning you in an unfamiliar situation. It wasn't very responsible or leaderly, and it's certainly not becoming of a future president, corporate, corporate or otherwise. Hmm. You suppose that's true? Let's not talk about president. Let's get a W in chat for Jane. Give me some W's, boys. You know, like the W that Rose takes out of the, uh, the little magnets. Yeah. Yeah, W. Somebody put two W's. Ban that person. That that person is an Eridan kin. Sound the alarm! <laughs> I suppose that's true. I guess you can accept this mess was a group of effort. Even in failure, it's influenced... <laughs> <laughs> it's, even if it's important to acknowledge the power of teamwork. Let's see. Eridan. Eridan kitties in my chat. Guards! Seize them! All of them! All the same, you hand Jane's rosy red spoon back to her. You are not worthy of its solemn mantle. Besides, some of the stuff that the robot voice said was beginning to seriously freak you out. Honestly, it meant a lot to me that yet you were willing to indulge my little hobby for a while. It may be the career path that I've been following my entire life, but you'd surprise how little I get to talk about it with anyone I'm close to. Anyways, wasn't the whole point that we were going to get you something to eat? As thanks for saving my life? Oh yeah, you guess you did do that. Huh. Good job, you. Your chest puffs up instinctively, a little, with pride. But the motion causes your still empty stomach to pres make its presence felt again with a loud gurgle. Speaking of which, we still need to take care of that. Letting a friend go hungry is completely unacceptable. So, how does giving it another try sound? Here's an idea. If you pick the recipe, I'll take care of the rest. I promise that I won't get distracted this time, alright? Yes, that sounds nice. Especially the part where Jane called you a friend. That was the nicest part of all. Isn't it always, boys? <laughs> I love that. I love that fucking drawing. Oh boy. This is this is always bittersweet cuz uh we got the good end. See for the for the writers who have never been to my stream or watched my stream or Anybody who's never watched my stream, we like to get the bad end first to get it out of the way. Because now we gotta end on the bad end. Oh, fuck! Uh oh. Oh, okay. Here, you can look up the recipe using this. I'd lend my phone to you, but, well, you know how it is with privacy. Don't put this on. Jane hands you what appears to be some sort of computerized tiara. Stylishly casting crocker red plastic. You guess you just put it on? That's not too complicated. <laughs> uh, so you've seen more peculiar user interfaces in your various travels across time and space, that's for sure. That's okay. Uh, that, no, that's okay. I, I, I think we're good. I think that's the end of the stream, guys. I'll, I'll see you later. The device fits snugly upon top of your head, despite your apparent lack of ears. You feel the unreal heiress thought wave tiara top begin to mesh physically with your own brain, as you are mentally hooked up to the limitless potential of the internet. <laughs> hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Is that Morgana? Hold up. Yeah, I figured. Okay. Yeah, I saw Morgana, and I was like, oh, fuck, wait a minute. These are your cats. These are all your cats, aren't they? That's really fucking great.
Stand is ready and waiting for your instructions. All you have to do is reach out. So you do. You begin to comb the web for something tasty and... You will surrender yourself and you will cease reproduction and you will comply and you will comply and you will comply. Wait, what? Obey. 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 All at once, something hits you inside of your skull and begins to ricochet around your synapses and neurons, seeming to fill every corner and crevice of your brain with a deafening wave of silent noise. A single instruction, uttered with incalculable force, impossible to ignore. Obey. Your mind, so susceptible to outside influence, is no match for it. You feel a million sharp pains as a million neural pathways are rearranged to form sharp angles and ordered lines and circuits, and in a blinding flash of light, her design overwhelms every part of me and consumes every atom of me, and then retransmits and amplifies the whole in concert with her will. And I cannot know any different, because this is all that I am, and it is so much more than I was. And I see her worthless protege's face twist in a look of horror at the sight of my transformation. But I do not spare her a second glance as I look skywards. I am free of such concerns now. And in the eye of the mind that now belongs to her, I see the place I need to go. And I reach out with the power I stole and I step forward into it. And in her throne room, I kneel beneath her smile as she sets a course, a course for everywhere. There are problems in this universe that require our attention. And I, her new weapon, smile too. We're going to fix everything. Help call 911, please. Please call 911. I... Please, please. Help call the police. No problem, Piff. <clears throat> wow. Okay, see you later. Look at this, they just came in. They just, they just came in. And now they're abandoning me for Kate. Abandoning me for Kate. Unbelievable. Anyways. Let's solve a mystery! <laughs> been bothering you for a while, but for someone who claims to fall in the footsteps of the very uh, gutsiest of gumshoes, James seems pretty unmotivated to find out who's been trying to murder all her, uh, her all these years. Perhaps you should use the means at your disposal to finally put this mystery to rest once and for all. You suggested Jane that maybe you should try to ascertain who the parcel was sent by. By whom was the parcel sent? What? Grammar, silly. It's very important. Oh, of course. You suppose you agree with that. After all, this is a text-based medium, and shoddy craftsmanship can only obscure information. Proper adherence to linguistic conventions is of the utmost importance, ensuring the conveyance of salient details in a timely and comprehensible manner. But damn it, Jane, now isn't the time. You've got a case to solve. Yes, yes, all right. But what exactly are you proposing that we do? There's very little evidence that we could feasibly collect. Two of you look forlornly out of the window again. 
down to where the mailbox should be. Gain is right. That avenue of investigation went up in smoke a few minutes ago. The investigation has barely gotten started, and the trail has already gone cold in a blazing ball of fire. I'd suggest asking the mail office or similar, but I don't suppose they know anything detailed about the package's origins. It's not like regular mail workers have access to that kind of information. To make matters worse, the mail is one of the few public services Crocker Corp doesn't partially own, so I wouldn't be able to pull any strings. I don't suppose there were, there was anyone watching at the time the bomb was placed either. You have to admit, the possibility seems somewhat remote. That gives you an idea. If there aren't any witnesses to hand, why not make some of yourselves? What, bribe someone to falsify a testimony? Or similar? That's certainly a novel way of going about it. Jane seems to be giving it a lot more thought than you would have expected, but in any case, that wasn't at all what you meant. You explained to Jane that, far from merely being able to transportalize between any two physical locations, you also possess the ability to time travel. Time travel ificate to any point in the past or future. Hmm. Not to be rude, considering that you did just say by laughing and everything, but that does sound more than a little far-fetched. Jane seems pretty skeptical about this, but you honestly can't be bothered to work through all of her personal misgivings about belief and the feasibility of time travel right now. You've been through this with more than a dozen people already. You decide to take a more pro proactive approach. Seeing is believing, after all. You grab her wrist and zap her back in time. Oh, oh, hey? Jane, meet past Jane. Jane, meet future Jane. You trust this will make suffice as evidence. I... I don't... Um... Alright, moving on. <laughs> okay, that's not how... <laughs> that's not how time travel... Okay, fine. You know... I pride myself on back to the future laws of time travel, and that, that ain't how that shit works. That shit hurted. You're apparently next to the bush that you hid behind earlier. Take refuge in it once again. A conveniently abandoned wish wristwatch on the ground nearby indicates that you have traveled an hour into the past. No sign of the white cat yet. The mailbox is there in all its beautiful, unexploded majesty, but stands empty as of right now. What if we were the cat? What if we were the cat? This is perfect. All you have to do now is wait for the truth to come to you. See, Jane, isn't this exciting? Jane? Oh, fuck. Alright, guys. You, you got me. You got me. We got both. We got both. 911, what's your emergency? Please note that misplaced apostrophes on shop signs do not constitute an emergency. And... The law to help. I'm stuck in the past. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what wanted to tip you off? Was it the fact that nobody else talks like it's the 1920s? What? No. I mean, this is entirely literally. I'm quite literally stuck in the past in a temporal sense. I don't like that. I don't like that sprite. That sprite makes me sad. That sprite makes me sad. I don't like that sprite. Oh. Oh, gee, wait, really? Who told you that? Was it... Ah, I bet it was TT. York and my thunder, goddammit, Strider. No, 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 you're not listening to me. I have been transported back in time by a mysterious entity who recently saved my life from another ridiculous assassination attempt. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Damn. False alarm, I guess. Wait! You can't can travel time travel now. <laughs> no, this is a different mysterious entity. They don't seem related to the God Cat, as far as I can tell. They rescued me from a parcel bomb in the mailbox a short while ago, and have since taken it upon themselves to help me find whoever was responsible. They're remarkably enthusiastic about the issue, almost as if it were the civic civic duty somehow. Cat boys. Hmm. So, a number of mysterious abilities. Intimate knowledge of male safety. A compulsion to aid random citizens. Are you sure this person isn't just your mailman, Janie? 
I mean, who knows what kinds of magic those little guys can pull off? I'm pretty certain they have absolutely nothing to do with the profession of mail delivery in any practical sense. Anyway, the point is, we're now an hour in the past from our perspective, waiting for the perpetrator to place the bomb that not a few minutes ago threatened to blow me to kingdom come. It's all a bit much to take in. Well, <laughs> okay, I've lost the accent, guys. I've lost the accent. Well, shucks, Buster. Shucks, Buster, indeed. While Jane has busied herself with something on her phone, you've been keeping a lookout for anything suspicious. So far, nothing has happened. But now, just out of sight, you can hear the telltale sound of a vehicle approaching. You quickly, gently elbow Jane in the ribs to get her attention. And the two of you peek your heads tentatively out of the bush. A dwarf cleric. Bad choice. You'll find yourself never healing. And using zone of truth far too often. You watch an unassuming van pulls up on the side of the house. You keep watching as an unremarkable person gets out and carries a small pile of mail over to the mailbox. Totally unsuspiciously. From this distance, you can't really make out anything about them at all. This isn't nearly as helpful or informative as you'd hoped. This is no good. We can't see anything from all the way over here. I think we might have to resort to one of the more advanced tactics in every detective's arsenal. I propose that we accost this delivery worker, tie him up, and then scru scrupulously interrogate them for any information they might have. You guess that would work. Jean seems remarkably unconcerned with the ethical qualms inherent in assaulting a public servant. And at some point, you would have found this extremely alarming, but after a few months in Alternia, you are so accustomed to this kind of thing that the thought of actually disagreeing doesn't even occur to you. Jane gets into position and lead the charge. You reach out your hand and tear into reality, rummage around for a moment, and retrieve a long length of rope from somewhere in Terezi's hive. Hopefully she won't miss it. You mutter a quick prayer of apology to the guardian deities of male workers everywhere, and then... Now! The two of you leap from your hiding spot and tackle the hapless stranger just as they're about to climb back into the van. Have at you! Jane is brandishing her trusty spoon as threateningly as any sword. The poor defenseless postman is taken completely by surprise and topples to the ground. You quickly tie their arms and legs and then zap all three of you back out of sight and behind the bushes again. Then Jane sets to work. She fixes your captive with iron stare. And with ruthless, ruthless efficiency begins to rattle off a relentless stream of astute and insightful questions. Her tongue is like a whip, beating her quarry into submission. You watch in silent horror as she verbally dismantles this unfortunate soul, piece by fearful piece. It's like watching a dozen interrogation scenes from a dozen gritty crime dramas and noir detective flicks all at once. She pretends to smoke an invisible cigar at one point, seemingly without noticing at all. You don't have the words for what she does with the spoon. When Jane finally pauses to catch her breath, the nameless and faceless courier manages to choke out a few words and spill the beans. It's a scant few beans, you are sorry to say. They don't... They say they don't know much. Hell, with the dame roughing them up like that, they can't even remember their own name. But they do remember the mysterious package marked Handle with Care. And addressed to the Crocker residence. They say they remember thinking that there was nowhere else the package could have been headed. With a surname like that, it was only fitting. You know, with that big red spoon on the side of the mailbox and everything. Jane doesn't say anything else. She just stands up and unties the prisoner. They are free to go. You flash them a look which you hope says something like, I'm sorry for helping this distressed teenager tie you up in order to satisfy your curiosity. And I appreciate your ongoing public service, but you've never been great at nonverbal communication. A notification ring comes out of Jane's phone. Perhaps chatting to a friend in this trying time will offer some comfort. You wander a short distance away, allowing Jane some space to process what's happened. You've learned the hard way that privacy is a fundamental right that should always be respected. How goes the investigation? Did you threaten a retail worker or something yet? OMG, Janie, you didn't, did you? 
God damn it, we talked about this. His, this. Jaden, are you okay? No. Uh. I can't believe that I'm typing this. The company, my company. It appears they were the ones who sent the bomb. Oh, okay. Um. You were right about them, I suppose. You being serious? You're not, like, pranking me super hard? For the megalos? No, of course not. I'm hardly in the joking mood. Jane, this is great! What? You finally pulled through. The batter bitch has wool over your eyes. It's turning into Jane. All voices are the same! All voices are the same! Every voice is the same in my brain now. All of them is the same. You finally pulled through! The batter witch had wool over your eyes. Buy no more. I'm so happy. What? No. This is awful. Oh, right. A fucking course. What I meant was, uh, that... Ah, uh, will you please just stop it? <laughs> Whoa, fuck that sprite. Holy shit, that sprite. Angry. Never seen her this angry. Will you please... Just stop talking for a second. I can't think with all your endless ruddy face blithering all the time. I nearly died for the umpteenth time this morning, but survived, only to have my entire worldview start to collapse before my eyes by way of some mysterious time travel magic. Jeez Louise, this is easy for you. In fact, this must be Christmas and birthday come early for the three of you. You finally got what you wanted, which was to prove me wrong. Your insane collective conspiracy about my entire life being part of some evil plot looks like it might just hold water after all. Congratulations. Go on. Say that you told me so. Here. I'll even type it out for you to copy and paste so you won't have to worry about any more shit-faced spelling errors. I told you so. No? I'm not really sure what to say. You're kind of scaring me. I'm sorry. This is scaring me too. Jane sighs. You guess the conversation must be taking a turn for the heavy, but you can't say for sure. You're feeling good about your decision not to pry into this private conversation. It would truly be some kind of fucked up. It'd be some kind of fucked up to intrude at a really vulnerable moment when people are really seen at their best. It feels as though I'm in the middle of an ocean. Scratch that. It feels like my whole world is an ocean. Something so immense, so dark, so vast and deep that I can't even begin to imagine what might be beneath the surface. We're intruding. Oh, fuck, you're right. I gotta close the game, guys. We gotta give her some fucking room. Everything that I've ever known, everything that I've ever been, sinking down into it, vanishing with nary a trace. My only solace is to jump out of my own volition before I'm pulled under by a force. And what? Is someone gonna catch me? Help me stay afloat? The only float my best friend in the whole world has any familiarity with is flipping cocktails. Oh, gee, Jane. I know you're, like, being kind of mean and exasperated right now, but it means a lot to hear you say that I'm your best friend. I love you, heart. Ah. Rolal, please. I'm only trying to express the depths of my existential confusion over here. The ocean, Lalonde. The abyssal infinite ocean. Can you even imagine what that's like? Well, I mean... <laughs> Roxy lives... <laughs> Roxy lives in the middle of a fucking... Everything is flooded. Second thought, never mind. This whole analogy is contrived and nonsensical and couldn't possibly have any emotional relevance to anyone. <laughs> oh, God. Another sigh. God. I'm sorry. I'm not handling this well at all. I mean, to be to be honest, no. I turn it into walking. To be honest, no. But... What does that mean? LBR? You kids, what does LBR mean? Let's be real. Is that let's be real? 
I think it's, I think it's, let's be real. Yeah, okay. Like bro Ryan. Oh, I see. Let's be real. I don't know what precise arrangement of emotional responses would even realistically <laughs> ally, <laughs> realistic ally qualify as, quote, handling this whale, fish pun, for topic appropriateness. Whew. Like, I, I guess I had this whole plan for how I'd get you to accept the truth. And it would've worked, because lesby, les, lesby? Oh my god. <laughs> lesby. She is one. We know. We know. I'm a fucking genie, genius. Fucking. But also, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that it would've involved blowing up a whole bunch more shit. Or at least mega escapades. How about shenanigans? Oh, you know it. Shenanigans out the ass. <laughs> but the point is, I knew it'd be hard. Maybe hazardous to our relationship. And, or our, your physical health. But I knew that you were worth it. And also, for what it's worth. I don't give an effing fuck about dunking on your ass. None of us do. With a third and final huff, Jane slumps down on the ground, visibly deflated. All the tempest and fury out of her. And now she's sitting and gazing glumly at the wall of bubblegum pink on her screen. She seems utterly miserable. You want to comfort her, to offer solace and friendly counsel in this trying time. There comes a moment in every team's upbringing when she realizes that the globe-spanning multi-billion dollar corporation, which is their birthright, has also been responsible for some pretty shady and heinous nonsense, including multiple attempts on her own life. It's just part of growing up. Sometimes, you just can't wait to find... You can't find the words. And maybe it's not your place to comment anyway. Before you could think of something to say, Jane shakes her head and starts typing again. Alright. That's enough sitting around feeling all forlorn. I'm feeling pretty okay, actually. No, me! I'm talking about myself. This new reality is one that I simply have to accept, whether I like it or not. And it's no good being glum about it, especially not if it leads me to mistreat my nearest and dearest. So, I'm not going to be the leader of a worldwide mega corporation. Big deal. There are better things to be applying my savvy towards. Friends who have my back, for instance. Oh, Chief Janie, I'm loving this new enthusiasm. I understand. I've been remiss in my duties all of late, but that ends now. Where once I had a duty to my heritage, now I have a duty to those who care about me. The call of leadership comes from elsewhere. Um, gee, yes. These words you're typing, meaningful and full of poignancy. Jane, oh, fuck, that pose is so fucking good. Fuck! Jane strikes a pose that looks like, at once, determined, bold, fearless, and resolute. And all while still typing furious way on her mobile. Just goes to show how hard she must have trained for a moment like this. And so, for my first act as a responsible friend with eyes unclouded by sugary haze of a manipulative baking empire, I say that it ends here. The game in which we've been pawns for years stops today. Hell yes. Hell yes. Yes. Hell yes. I think I've rather gone off the idea of games altogether, haven't you? Specifically, the game. Hell fucking y- Wait. What? The Alpha. I've decided that I'm not going to participate. It's Crocker Corp product. It's clearly part of some grand evil scheme or another. It'd be positively suicidal to consider playing it at this point. They did it again. They did it again. We, we unintentionally stopped them from playing Spurb again. It's the third time. Well, yes, but... But what? There's no doubt in my mind about it. Furthermore, as your friend, poor fucking Roxy. Roxy just wants to get off her fucking... Roxy wanted to do it so she could be with her friends. No longer stuck at home. Well, Roxy is. Roxy's stuck at home still. So is Dirk. Oh, fuck. Wait a minute. This, this must be a cannon offshoot, because, like, without without Alpha, fucking Dirk would just be stuck at home. 
That's where he belongs. I'd rather have him there, to be honest. Um. Furthermore, as your friend, and I, and as one recently reminded of her duty of care in this regard, I feel like I should be strongly advising against any of us playing it, or anyone at all for that matter. Now that I think about it, it's our solemn responsibility to ensure that nobody ever gets their hand on this game. Just imagine the havoc it could wreak. We've got one week before the Alpha is due to release. I'm certain we can think of some nefarious schemes to disrupt it in the meantime. If we work together as a team, I'll trust I'll be able to count on your hackser skills in this endeavor. I, um, sure. Completely accidental lack of excitement. My six skills are yours to command. My six skills are yours to command. I knew it. You're the best BFFC one could hope for, heart. Jane clears her throat, pockets her phone, and seems to have reached some kind of conclusion. That chat looked from the outside like it was a huge emotional journey from start to finish. You're glad that Jane seems to be feeling better for having had it, whatever they ended up talking about. Sometimes all you need is a friend to vent things towards in a healthy and productive manner. I suppose I should thank you again. Without your help, I may have never learned the truth. It's quite possible I would have lived out the rest of my potentially very short life without another opportunity to see things for what they really were. I don't know how I shall ever repay you. Since nothing today has changed the fact that Jane is ludicrous, ludicrously wealthy, you can think of a great number of ways that she could feasibly repay you. But that might just be pushing it a little too far all at once. So instead, you effortlessly spin some yarn about this is what being fr what friends are for and so on. It's a speech you've given many, many times before. Holy fuck! I've depended on you for a great deal, but now I think it's time to forge my own path and under my own steam. I'll show the world that Jane Crocker can accomplish with naught but her two bare hands. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have an existential crisis to avert. There she go. There she go. There she go. There she go. Please be the end. Okay. We're safe. We're safe. Don't worry, guys. We're, we're safe. We're safe. Oh, we're safe. All right. Hey, that bad end fucked me up real bad. All right. Check the credits real quick. <laughs> Jane just walked away, but it's a week in the past. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right. It sure is. Yeah, you missed everything, Cat. I didn't do the goose thing, so you didn't miss out. Maybe next time. Ugh. That's a good shit. There's been a lot of writers. It is Pip. Pip to Jane. Pip to Jane. Sarah was here in chat for a bit. Sarah did Terezi. And of course, James. James was here. Uh, who did Dave and Aradia. Thank you for everyone who showed up. I know that I know they all abandoned me for the PGN pod version. That's all right. I get it. Kate's more likable than I am. I understand. I understand. Character artist. Yeah, we got instant death. We got instant death first. Background artists. I, I keep, I'm having a hard time picking out Jane. Did I make it to the start? Uh, no, I get some bad news. You made it to the end. This will all be up on YouTube. Ending illustrations. 
that's some good shit. James did the music. According to James, did the music in an hour. Where is it? Buster's theme. No. I guess. <laughs> I guess. It's a good name. I guess. All right. The fuck does that mean? It means James made the song in an hour because he fucking was in a rush. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. This was fun. Some of it. The other parts were scarring for the rest of my life. So, uh, yeah. See you guys later.